Hello and welcome to Appendix 2 of the video series of Pilina Tokipona. In this video and the next ones, I'd like to um, present some helpful thoughts that will help you to understand the thinking behind the video series and maybe also help you on your language learning journey, because I know it took me a long time to work some of these things out. So the first question is, what is language? Sounds like a simple question, but actually it isn't at all. Language is an amazing thing. You think my conscious mind is a closed system and your conscious mind is the same. It's a closed system. They're like their own little worlds. So how is it possible that I can get my thoughts into your mind? How can I get thoughts from my closed system, from my conscious mind? into your conscious mind. How is that even possible? Well, what I do is I take my thoughts, I convert them into a stream of noises. I make these noises with my mouth. And then in your mind, you take these noises and you convert them into thoughts. How can I be sure that it's worked? Well, we communicate a lot, trial and error, misunderstandings, but ultimately, because of the experience we have with using our language, we can be fairly sure that when I convert my thought into noises, uh, the thought that you end up with when you convert my noises into thoughts is close enough. And that's how I get my thoughts into your mind. It's quite amazing, really, isn't it? So basically, what is language? Language is a system in the mind that converts thoughts to words and words to thoughts. So when I have thoughts and I want to speak, this system in my mind converts those thoughts into words. And when you use words to communicate with me, the system in my mind converts those words to thoughts. Of course, in the case of the sign language, it's signs. Uh, but to keep things simple, I'll speak of these two things as thoughts and words. But what about grammar books and dictionaries? You, you get these dictionaries and these grammar books and it's like they're telling you, I am the language. This is the language. And it's not the case. There was a time when I felt I'd been lied to <laughs> because I realized that these books are not the language. What I had been doing was I had been confusing the map with the territory. And this map territory distinction is very useful when talking about language. The map is not the territory. The menu is not the meal. Let's think about this for a few minutes. Imagine you're going to a new place. Maybe you're going to be a tourist. Maybe you're going to move there. What might you do? You might get yourself a map. Um, these days, You'll use an app in your smartphone, but that's also a map. So that map will try to represent the territory for you. But it's going to be wrong sometimes. Even if it's not wrong, sometimes it's just going to be incomplete. It's not going to give you all the information you need. And sometimes you're going to misunderstand it. No matter what, you can study that map all you want. And it's nothing like actually going to the territory and experiencing it for yourself. Because when you go to the territory, those experiences you have and that knowledge you acquire of the territory is nothing like the map. Think of the town where you grew up. If I showed you a map of your hometown, could you show me where everything is on that map? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I remember when I couldn't, when I would see a map of where I grew up and I would find it difficult uh, to know where everything was on the map. But I could definitely find my way around my hometown. Of course, I knew where everything is. But the point is that my perception of, that, of the territory was different to my perception of the map. The two are different things. So... What is it then if, if books 
are not language and books are just maps to the language, then what really is the language? Well, we just said the language in our minds is a system, but it's an implicit system. It's implicit knowledge. What's the difference between explicit and implicit? Well, explicit knowledge is knowledge we can put into words, knowledge that we can describe. Implicit knowledge is knowledge that you can't describe, even that you don't know you have. So just now, we used the example of your perception of your hometown. That's, all, that's also implicit knowledge. It's knowledge that you can't quite describe, that you can't quite convert into words. Another example of implicit knowledge is riding a bike. <laughs> Nobody ever learnt to ride a bike by reading a book. Uh, you could write a book about riding a bike, but it wouldn't be very useful. You know, when I ride my bike, sometimes I, I wonder how to think about what I do when I ride my bike, because when I turn, I don't just do that. I have to shift my weight somehow, otherwise I'll fall off. And then sometimes after the event, I realize that to suddenly swerve uh, for an obstacle, I realized that I shifted my weight in a particular way. And maybe I moved one pedal back and the other pedal forward, and I moved one leg back and the other leg forward. And I, I realized that I, I did something to make sure I didn't fall off and to make sure I navigated that obstacle. But I knew it even though I didn't know I knew it. It was implicit knowledge. And language is also implicit knowledge. Language is an implicit system, it's a subconscious system. And maybe the fastest way I could demonstrate to you that it's implicit and that it's subconscious for English is with adjective order. Now, I didn't know this, but in English, when you have more than one adjective before a word, they have to go in a specific order. So for example, if you have a strange green metallic object, it must be a strange green metallic object. You can't say it's a metallic green strange object. A long narrow plastic thing it can't be a narrow plastic long thing. A tall, thin young man it can't be a thin, tall man. It can't be a young, tall, thin man. It's, it's a tall, thin young man. A sweet little old Chinese lady. It's not a Chinese old little sweet lady or an old little sweet Chinese lady. No, no. It's a sweet little old Chinese lady. Isn't that interesting? I never realized this. Um, and people who are learning English as a second language might find this completely maddening because, you know, English is crazy. Why do you have this crazy rule? I've now got to learn this rule. You see, it's, it's explicit. That would be explicit knowledge. I don't know this explicitly. I know this implicitly. This is knowledge I don't know I have. And how do I know I have this knowledge? This knowledge? Well, when you say, a tall, thin young man, I ask the language system in my mind if that's right, and it says, yeah, it's right. But if you say a thin, tall young man, the language system in my mind goes, eh. I can't tell you why, but it does. So the point here is that language is an implicit system. It's not an explicit system. An explicit system or a grammar that tries to describe a language is not the language. It's a map, not the territory. So language is an implicit system. It's a subconscious system. And understanding that is a very important first step to um, moving forward and making progress in uh, learning and teaching language. Uh, so there's something Bill Van Patten says, which is what's on page 32 is not what ends up in people's heads. It's true. So how do we learn language? Well, that's the next video.